Hey everybody, Jeff Williams here with sjeffwilliams.com. Okay, today we're going to um, be doing a little work on what was called a Bedini motor or a Bedini generator. Now I know that has not a lot to do with automotive repair, and but I did get a lot of questions on the blog site if I have ever heard of one or if I even tried to build one. And of course the questions um, led me to respond with a big no. Uh, but so what we did is um, we decided to download the, um, the blueprints to the Bedini motor and try to build one ourselves here in the shop. See if there's any truth to this thing uh, as far as charging batteries and some of them even claim to have over unity if you understand what that is. So we uh, got the blueprints, put it together and voila, it does seem to work. And here it is in a nutshell. Um, we're running two coils and here's our rotor in the center and our circuitry is in the back and the um, the rotor is nothing more than a little scooter wheel that we bought at Big Five and then we put our magnets here in the end uh, these are ne uh, neodymium magnets they have to be neodymium in order for it to work um, in the front here you've got your two transistors one for each coil and of course the potentiometer which acts like a throttle gate um, then over here you've got your two lead acid batteries uh, one's uh, primary and one's a secondary or a charger. Um, over here you can see our voltmeters. Uh, this is for the charger. Uh, we're running 12.21 and it's still climbing as you can see. It's trying to climb up to 2.2 and then it'll keep going up past that. Our primary battery has been sitting at 12.14 and has been doing so for most of the day. Um, so in essence, yes, it does work. Uh, in order to build this little guy though, it's really not that complicated. What you're going to need is you're going to have to go to Radio Shack and you're going to have to pick up some transistors, uh, some diodes, and some resistors. Uh, the neodymium uh, magnets though, you're going to have to order online because I don't think you're going to be able to find it in any of your Radio Shack. So, how does this thing go together? Well, I'm going to try to simplify it for you. Let me get my pointer out so you can understand it. Okay, first things first. If you take your transistor, your 2N3055, and flip it over on the back, if you don't drop it like I did, flip it over on the back, and you'll notice that the two plugs on the back sit a little bit lower than if you were to turn it upside down. You want to make sure that those two are down low. If you draw an imaginary line through the center, you'll see these two little plugs on the back. Okay, the one on the left is the emitter, the one on the right is the base, and the outer shell is referred to as the collector. So what you're going to want to do is take a diode, 1N4001, and you can always tell what direction the diode should go because there's a little white cap on the end. That's the direction that the current will flow, but it cannot flow back the other way. So what you're going to do is you're going to solder that little diode in there between the emitter and the base for your first step, which goes in between these two guys here. Then second, you're going to get a resistor, which is 470, and you're going to solder him off the base as well. He's going to come off the side here, as you can see, and you're going to solder him into a potentiometer. 1K to a 5K should work. Um, you can solder a loop to the second prong if you want, or leave it open. We left ours open. Um, then you're going to leave that alone for now. You're going to have to get a neon bulb. Those are kind of hard to find at Radio Shack. You're going to um, solder him into the collector base. And over here to the emitter, okay? That's going to act as a safety so you don't overheat that, uh, that transistor. So back here to the emitter, you're going to have one more wire that comes off. And this one is going to be going off to the coil. And I'll explain how that works. Now the last thing you're going to need is a 1N4007. This is the last transistor. So remember that. you got two, uh, not transistor, but diode. Excuse me. You're going to have two diodes, uh, 4001 and a 4007. Uh, the 4007 also comes off the collector base and eventually it'll come over here to the, uh, the charging battery on the positive side. Now the charging battery and the primary battery are linked together um, via the negative and the positive and then this wire will come off the two and go to the larger gauge wire and remember this is a bifiler coil uh, which means that it, you got two different size wires on there that's wrapped around it and what you're going to want to do is where that big wire comes out the other end you're going to solder it right to the collector base now for your two little uh your smaller gauge wire which is usually a 24 gauge 
you're going to run one off and it's going to go to the emitter like I told you and the other one's going to go to the negative on the uh, primary battery and then of course the other wire is going to come off and eventually go to the other end of that 1k potentiometer now the coil is basically 900 turns of 20 gauge and 24 gauge wire and in the center you've got an iron soft core which is usually welding rods or small little rods that are epoxy together in the very middle of this guy now the rotor can be anything you want it can spin around and do whatever you want um, it could be a rotor wheel like we have on a scooter but you got to have neodymium magnets on the end and they have to be facing out north on their polarity um, and the air gap in here is usually about a quarter of an inch right in there um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell so um, don't forget that you have to have two gauge wires of 20 24 um, one's got to be considerably thicker than the other and I would probably do about 900 turns um, if you can I mean the more turns the better I say so anyway so if you have questions about this um, total build up and design leave me a comment uh, down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible um, these are not very difficult to build they're really simple uh, John Bedini did build a whole host of other motors uh, generators and some of them are very elaborate there's some self runners and there's even some that can power your entire house um, I haven't built those yet because I can't quite afford all the components just yet. Uh, but there does seem to be a lot of truth behind these, these designs. So if you have questions, leave me a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams with SJeffWilliams.com saying good luck and see you next time.